past 20 years, we've developed uh, an extraordinarily sophisticated uh, bedside-to-bench research program focused on hepatitis C and recurrence of hepatitis C following transplantation here at the University of Washington. We were one of the first places in the country to be able to actually measure the hepatitis C virus in blood and tissues because of a young man here, David Gretsch, who was in laboratory medicine. We were very fortunate at that point that Michael Cates, who is a virologist here at the university, had developed a very sophisticated laboratory uh, in studying a variety of viruses. About 15% of patients who undergo transplantation for hepatitis C have recurrence of disease, progressive fibrosis, and develop cirrhosis within five to seven years after the transplant. One of the most exciting findings uh, that's been reported in recent years is the fact that if we can eradicate the virus from the blood and all the extra hepatic tissues uh, at the time of transplantation, we can prevent recurrence of the infection in 90% of patients post-transplant. For a patient with hepatitis C whose liver function is still okay uh, and who's being transplanted for liver cancer, that's a golden opportunity to try cure their hepatitis C. If we can cure their hep C while they're waiting for transplant, their post-transplant course is more likely to be uh, much less complicated and they won't have to face the reality of recurrent hepatitis C in their new graft. So, while only a proportion of liver cancer patients may qualify for, for liver transplant, um, we want to be very hands-on in those patients' care so that they have a successful transplant, that they do well, their graft does well, and that they have a low risk for cancer recurrence. Um, at the University of Washington, we've, we've been very aggressive about taking this population of liver cancer patients who are transplant candidates who have adequate liver function and, and treat them uh, with the available medications currently so that we do our best to, to get them hep C virus negative going into transplant. The challenge with that, of course, is the fact that we don't, in, the toxicity of the current medications is such that even when we try to do patients benefit, we can actually do them harm. Um, the preliminary study showed that with interferon and ribavirin, we're only effective in a very small percentage of patients with very favorable genotypes of hepatitis C and many patients simply couldn't tolerate those medications. The University of Washington Medical Center has had me go through a treatment. Uh, they call it the triple treatment. Interferon, ribavirin, and Victrellis. There were many complications to this treatment. Many side effects. Uh, I had insomnia. Um, there was low red and white blood cell counts, low platelet levels, many side effects that were very hard on me. Treatment that I received were, were, were very helpful, but there were a lot of side effects. There came with some of them where I had, uh, you know, I would shake, I would have a lot of tremors. I could actually pass out, get dizzy, and that type of stuff, so I couldn't function in a real world. Many patients after a transplant simply can't tolerate interferon and ribavirin because they have low white blood cell count, low platelet count, and renal insufficiency, all of which are contraindications to the use of interferon and ribavirin. After the transplant, I did become uh, eligible for some, uh, a study. Once I got on that drug through this, this study, that actually made a lot of things work better. My kidney numbers got better, my uh, liver numbers got better, but most of all it made me undetectable for, for hepatitis within a month. All of the currently approved uh, medications for uh, the treatment of hepatitis C involve the use of uh, interferon. Fortunately there are over 50 new therapies under investigation for hepatitis C. Uh, we are uh, actively involved in many clinical trials uh, evaluating the safety and efficacy of these treatments. With this experience and the results of these clinical trials, uh, we know that these treatments are certainly safer and better tolerated than interferon-based treatments. If this next generation of directly acting antiviral agents live up to their promise, uh, this will revolutionize pre- and pro-transplant care for patients with hepatitis C as we will have a, a means to eliminate hepatitis C pre-transplant and thereby prevent post-transplant recurrence 
and we, would, we will have a means to treat patients post-transplant safely to prevent fibrosis progression uh, as well. What we're particularly excited about is with the newer agents where we can avoid the use of interferon in these patients, we think we're entering an entirely new era where we will be able to much more safely and effectively eradicate the virus prior to transplantation. And that in itself is going to have a dramatic impact on transplantation.